right so next section is uh, charting records basically you have to keep a uh, record right so for the purpose of studying buying and selling waves referred to in section 5m we require a trend chart trend chart is just a chart of the market all right the market trend and representative general market average each of the New York Times 60 stocks whatever like this is just uh, a market average supplemented by a wave chart all right so you're gonna keep a bar chart of the S&P and a wave chart or you can just put the wave chart right over the bar chart um, I, it's not that hard just add the wave chart on top of a bar chart our tr in the wave chart I mean there's basically zigzag with uh, with labels and those labels can be price and time they can be price number of bars if you're using a um, a uh, time frame or it can be pr price and volume or it can just be volume like whatever is easier for you just do that but the point is to get started anyway so this is supplemented by a wave chart so you need you need a daily or whatever daily chart for example of the S&P and then just put the wave chart on it okay our trend chart a general market average um, where you study the larger waves of the market it is a large scale roadmap to the ultimate destination by the way you need a bar chart wave chart and point figure chart I think he's gonna mention that somewhere else so we'll see you know how he sums it all up all right. wave chart helps us detect approaching turning points of the larger waves frequently two or four days in advance Wow, that's real nice to know <laughs> all right especially if your wave chart is moving because uh, it's the reason why it's supposed to do this is because it has leaders so if they're gonna lead the move up they'll lead the move down so they should have some type of advantage and we'll I'll experiment with that we cannot very well trade or invest in a total of 50 or 100 stocks simultaneously well we can now with the uh, ES futures or even ETFs and then what he does is um, he uses a position sheet And what he wants to do is see which parts of that position sheet are the best. For this purpose, we either employ the position sheet or we must use group charts. My approach, like I decided yesterday, is just going to be a position sheet. So it'll probably be a position sheet of 50 leading stocks or 30 feet leading stocks, depends how many I want to do. So, and it's going to... So it's basically a bottom-up approach instead of a top-down approach. Now, if you want, you can use the groups and the industries and all that, but I'd rather just focus directly on the stocks and overall market and a uh, wave chart of leaders. So, um, then after we have decided which groups offer the greatest opportunity, we want to get the best individual stocks. Yeah. In brief, we aim usually to trade in harmony with the trend of the market as a whole and the most promising groups of stocks. Having narrowed our choice down to the most desirable group, we must next have facilities for selecting the best opportunities from a large number of individual stocks. These will enable us to operate in the stocks that will move soonest, fastest, furthest, and to avoid being tied up in dull, in dull dead stocks. The amount of time at your disposal for stock market purposes will, of course, control the amount of work you can do without overworking or interfering with your profession. In general, it is much better to limit your chart work. Again, what you don't want to do, and this is a big mistake that most people make, <laughs> is chart the entire market. So, for example, there's an S&P and they want to chart 500 stocks. Or the, you know, there's S&P, and then they want to chart all the groups, and then the stocks within the groups. This this is a mistake many people make, where they overwhelm themselves. 
So instead of doing that, keep it simple and then add what you can do. So for example, it is better to keep chart of 20 stocks than 200 stocks. Okay, so because you can focus on 20, and then you get better, you go to 30, then you get better, you go to 40, then you get better, so it's, you know, you're improving and increasing as you gain proficiency. Do not try to go directly to 200 stocks. And do not try to directly set up, I don't know, 60, 70 groups. If you do that, it will be very overwhelming. And if you miss a few days, then you might just give up on it. What you want to do is keep it brain dead simple. All right. And that may include just charting the S&P. So, for example, just charting the S&P on a bar chart, putting that wave chart on it, and getting a point figure chart. That's it. In fact, that's probably recommended, is just to start off with an index first. And then, um, and then add the uh, charts 20 at a time. You know, so go with that. Do not try to do all the stocks you, you want to do. Instead, just chart the index. All right. For the average or and more advanced students, and the following is recommended. You chart an, uh, a market. You chart a sector. You chart a group. And you chart about 20 stocks. And you chart... Um, the wave chart of tape reading which is just the leaders I haven't gone into like leader selection but the idea is you know you have a set of leaders and you're looking at them and you're charting them all right so let's just keep this even more simple and focus on one thing what you want to do is chart the S&P and for the S&P, put a zigzag with um, price and time, or price and volume, or just volume. Use a point and figure chart and a bar chart with the with a zigzag on it. That's it. Then then add all of this later. But just get started. Just do one market. Um, just one market which is the S&P and then later on start adding stuff <laughs> the upper, above portfolio can be expanded either by increasing the number of individual stocks by the way like I, I you know when I said one market like if you're for example uh, marketing if you're doing the Dow that's enough if you're doing the S&P, that's enough for now, all right, because you really want to avoid that pitfall where you try to do like 100 stocks and day after tomorrow or day after tomorrow, you don't do it. And then the day after, you don't do it. And the day after, you just say, fuck it. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah. All right. So if you do one one stock, even if you miss a day, like if, if you just do the S&P, even if you miss a day or two, it's not going to be a big deal. But if you have 200 and you miss like a day or two or three, and then, then it's going to be very overwhelming. All right. Um, and then after that, when you, get, you know, when you're able to establish some discipline and consistency with one market, and move on to you know adding 10 stocks etc all right so anyway at the start however you will make up and maintain vertical charts of a trend chart by the trend chart it just means the S&P right? and the most important group averages eventually if you want to do that you know the sector spiders for example you can use these for the purpose of determining the trend of the market and of the several groups Then when you find 
from your vertical group charts a group that offers promising opportunities, you may refer to your figure charts of the individual stock. All right, so he's just telling you like how to go about it um, because it's a lot. So he said, you know, uh, you don't have to do the point figure, you know, start off with the bar charts. But again, like I'm recommending just do the S&P, get yourself a bar chart, which everyone looks at anyway. Just put the zigzag on it with the labels and get a point figure chart, you know. And so you probably just shouldn't keep doing what you're doing, but just add a point and figure chart and uh, see, and then slowly just, you know, make, uh, update it, update your method by adding additional stocks or, now there's probably going to be a lot of questions, oh, should I add futures, should I add Forex, I'm not going to comment on that uh, because it's not going to be possible to do stock market, forex, futures, you know, where you do commodities. It's not, it's just not possible. All right. So for now, again, just stick with the ES and be done with that. In this way, you can, if your time is limited, have much, okay, forget that. Uh, all of this is just pointing down to this fact that it's a very clerical job, so don't uh, overwhelm yourself. All right, one market, that's all for now. All right, if you have time and assistance, keep your chart records or make it more elaborate. Um, add the following to your list, a weekly chart and a monthly chart. So you got a daily chart of the S&P, just put a zigzag on it with and label it with volume so it becomes like a wave chart or time and price and keep a point figure of it and the weekly and monthly most people do that anyway so it'll be a very easy easy little thing to do so you got the daily the weekly and the monthly the above should not be used exclusively since they are not sufficiently sensitive to permit accurate timing. Meaning, don't just use the weekly and monthly, use it with the daily. Too much vital detail may be lost in consolidating of the daily. So, you have to use the daily, not just the weekly. That's what he's saying over here. Both the vertical and figure charts may be kept in a loose leaf notebook. I mean, you have a platform, so just save. All right, so we've gone over what to do up to this point. Up to this point, if you're following along, I'm going to say one more time, you want to follow the S&P or the NASDAQ or the Russell or the Dow. Just follow one market, not more than that. If you're already doing that, great. You're halfway done. <laughs> and what you want to do is add the zigzag indicator on it. And that zigzag indicator on it should have, you know, like the Weiss wave, for example, would be a good idea to have that. Or um, a, just a zigzag with, you know, volume. Or zigzag with price and time. Or zigzag with price and, price and number of bars. Whatever options you have for labeling. Now, the retracement amount to use on the zigzag I'm not gonna get into that because there are pref preferences you know some people like to see more detail some people like to see less detail play around with the retracement amount and you'll determine what you know you feel comfortable with um, you want to get that point figure the point figure chart you should really have a market with uh, one box reverse so uh, excuse me, a platform with one box reversal, so e-signal, um, trade station, invest RT, market delta, uh, bullseye broker, the old one, up data, these are some platforms that support one box reversals. If you don't have that, and you only have Ninja Trader, for example, then, you know, you could just use a three box reversal you know you don't have one box reversal now um, but just use whatever you have or whatever you're comfortable with 
You might also want to check with the SMI and um, identify and just uh, see if they already have all of this for you, meaning they might have all the groups already there done right, you know, with leading stocks, not $3 stocks. So you might just want to look at what SMI offers in their charting package. Um, see if they have that one box reversal, if they have the white cough wave already built out. They might have everything already built out. So you don't have to do everything from scratch or, you know, so, but yeah, just, just follow along one market and then slowly adding other markets to it, stock market, right? So now for the main piece, which I'm going to start probably tomorrow, this is an important piece. This is the most important study, in my opinion, in the uh, Wyckoff course, as far as trend uh, and etc. Con are uh, concerned. So when I go over this, you want to make sure you're reading the course. Don't just listen to me. Read the course and observe the fine details there's a uptrend and a downtrend all right that he talks about here let's go to somewhere here if i can find the jesus this is these are really long <laughs> anyway so there's an uptrend and a downtrend so I'm going to break this down into two two or more um, recordings. The first recording is going to focus on the uptrend. The second recording is going to focus on the downtrend. And it might be a third recording to focus on this counter trend up. And maybe a fourth for this count, for this continuation downtrend. And maybe a fifth, depending on how much I can get done so I don't go over. So probably uh, four, four to five sessions will be used to cover this, um, this uh, study. All right. So you want to you make sure you read the course and listen to what I'm saying. And I'll be explaining all the behavior. And believe me when I say the same shit happens today. I've seen the same thing because the data points are the same. There's open, high, low, close, and the tape is essentially the same. You got price, the time, and the volume at that price. So the, there's nothing, even though this is a long time ago, the, the behaviors, when he talks about stuff like absorption and all of that, climaxes, Etc. You'll see that. You'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, take care. Have a good day. Bye.